Hello and welcome to the EVO 9's Beginner Guide. This guide is aimed at new players who may already have started the game but felt a bit lost in the process, or prospective players who may not have tried the game yet and maybe want more information about it before starting out. I'm Altro, I've been making EVO 9 beginner content for the past 4 years now, usually in video format but also a bit in written format, with a few articles and guides here and there, mostly for, you guessed it, the French community. Now today I'm making an exception with this English video series, in which we will follow the steps of a new player during his first hours of gameplay. Of course, this is more of an excuse for me so that I can show you the most important game mechanics along with a few tips and tricks and most importantly to put you in the right mindset to enjoy the game. Now, before we begin, I have two things to talk about. First, we will talk a bit more about the game to present it to show what is EVE Online and what makes it interesting. Then we'll talk about the account creation phase. It sounds a bit boring, but there are a few things we need to do during that phase that we won't be able to do later. So wait a few minutes before creating your account, it will be worth it. But let's start by introducing the game. Evenland is made by a company called CCP, which is an Icelandic game development company, so it's a bit original. But that's not the most surprising fact. The game has been released in 2003, which is one year before World of Warcraft. During all this time, the game has never ceased to improve thanks to its free expansions and updates. But of course, the game does have a monthly subscription fee, which explains how it has been able to keep improving over more than a decade. But do not let the old age of the game scare you away. EVE has never been more welcoming to new players than it is right now thanks to in part its improved tutorial system and thanks to its brand new free to play model which will start in November 2016 and will enable you to play the game for as long as you want for free but with a character of limited potential even though that will still enable you to try most activities in EVE. So back on track. Even 9 is a space opera MMORPG sandbox. This last point, the sandbox part, is fairly important and you will see that CCP, the developer, did not half assed this aspect of the game. So why? Because as opposed to other MMOs, in EVE the NPCs only have a marginal role. Not only in the game's economy but also in the player's progression and in his adventures. In EVE, you are free to do whatever you want and the game is rich enough that this means a real choice. The careers available are numerous and they range from things that are fairly classic like mining, production, combat, to things that are a bit more original like exploration, espionage, strategy, trading and even journalism. But of course this is a double-edged sword because it also means that as a new player you can easily feel lost at the start of the game, but don't worry too much about that, that's also why I'm here. So the first pillar of EVE is, in my opinion, the sandbox part. Second defining aspect, still in my opinion, is its worldwide server because in EVE, regardless of your geographical location, you are still playing with the whole world except for China, which has its own server. This is very important because not only does it make the world feel more alive because there are no alternative versions of the world that you could go into, except for again China, but it also means that the community is more tightly bound because you are all living the same experience in the same world and what happens to a group may have consequences to the whole server and there are no ways to go around it. To me, the third important aspect of EVE is its focus on team play. As an online game, you probably guessed already that EVE has some team play components and some multiplayer components, but it's even more true for EVE than for its competition, because in EVE there are no limits to how many players you can get into a single battle. There are no battlegrounds, for instance, if you want to make fair and balanced PvP matches, no underpopulation bonuses to buff players that might be outnumbered, none of that. And even beyond the combat side of things, EVE has a strong geopolitical component since the balance of power and the influence of various communities of players is very important. Like many things in this universe, you are free to choose if you want to take interest or not to this geopolitical component. But directly or indirectly, your actions will have an influence on the huge gears that keep the world turning. 
So to sum up, in my opinion, EVE is original and worth playing because it has the sandbox aspect, the worldwide server and community aspect, and of course, its team play components. But that's not everything. There is one last point that I did not mention earlier, that is the most important in my opinion, more important even than the sandbox, it's what I call the stakes. In EVE, there is no concept of reimbursement. Everything that is stolen or acquired through scamming remains the ownership of the person that acquired it. If your ship gets destroyed, for instance, you have to buy another one. If you get betrayed or scammed, the game masters cannot do anything for you, and so on, and so forth. At first glance, it may look like this is a negative point, but in actuality, this is this very concept of stakes and risk that gives all its savor to PvP activities. Because when there is an actual risk of failure, then the feeling of accomplishment you get from succeeding at doing something is way stronger. We all have various ways of feeling enjoyment, but beyond the gameplay and beyond your opinion of the game, I feel like succeeding against actual odds is one of the most rewarding feelings you could have about a game. And that's my conclusion for this short presentation of the game. Yes, EVE Online may not be the best game ever when it comes to giving you an instant and guaranteed feeling of enjoyment. However, what the game loses in instant fun, it wins it back in feelings of authenticity that only well-crafted virtual universes can provide. We are faced with a game with no mercy, where threats, conflicts and betrayals happen alongside friendships, trust and mutual aid and where there is very often the opportunity to be alongside people from all around the world. Before we jump to the next part, I want to show you a trailer that has been made by CCP and is called This is Eve. This trailer has been made from actual gameplay videos sent to CCP by actual players. The developers have kept the original audio and have reconstructed the scenes inside their own in-house engine so that it matches very well the original while staying a bit cinematic. And if you wonder why I'm showing you a trailer right now, well watch and see for yourself. Okay, what we're gonna do guys, we're gonna sit 10k off a target, we're gonna blap it really quick and then we're gonna warp to the run spot, does that make sense? Yep, yep. Standing. Okay, stand by. So, hey guys, here's the deal. They got their prophecy fleet up, and then Razor also has an Oracle fleet. So, we should have some interesting stuff about to happen. So, it's going to be like this we're going to portal through, and at the same time, the triage carriers are going to jump just the triage carriers at first. Everyone clear? Let me see. Oh, crap. I think. Will we be able to take on Guardians? Yeah, they got four Guardians. I don't think we should I don't do think this. We can do this. Don't worry about that. Now we're gonna fucking play some fun games. My heart's racing. Fun, relax. All wings alive. Primary is the Dominix in five, four, three, two. Decloak, decloak, decloak. Torpedoes on the Dominix. Dominix, Dominix. Orbit on me, micro warp drives on, we're moving. Secondary's Vipers in the Omen. He's in structure, take him down. Dude, that revelation out now. All nudes on the ramp. Turn out towards that guard, jump now. All dams on the damnation, all dams on the damnation. Shatter, stay here and tackle prophecies. This is where we fight. All right. So I'm carrying a hundred times more than my ship is worth. There were some pirates chasing me. Um, this one guy chased me through like five different systems. I need to get the fuck out of the system. This little rock right here is worth about 166 million isk. For some people this might not be a big deal, but for me, it's huge. Seller 4.2, pretty nice. Gonna produce four of them, two days, 19 hours, 11 minutes, 44 seconds. We can expect to make eight to 10 million around there. 51 out of 56 grit. Okay, good. And we've got five modules to fit in here. The ship's speed is actually pretty good. It can hit 4K a second. We're gonna hurt that now by adding on some armor buffer. Up, success. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yay, this is so much fun. 
Oh yeah, such fun. It's almost done now. Like uh, less than a week. Oh look! Whoa! Okay, yeah, oh. Whoa! Shit. Oh. <laughs> that is Rex and Geeks right oh, yeah. there. I'll give you the silos down, I'll give you the silos down. Go, 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 the silos down. Portal, portal, primary. Gate is green, gate is green. Sniper skills to one red, you guys, BSC. Primary guards, idle, and green, come on. Oh shit, how do I warp to something? E-war drone, all E-war oh. drones on Skull. Where are you decloaking? Hot, so will be the secondary. Oh my god, that's a Titan! Holy shit, that's a Titan! Oh my god, that's a Titan! Let's go, get those fucking bombs out, Red Group, fire! So what the trailer just showed us is that this is EVE, or at least the part where everything follows the plan. Now of course you could say that at times the actors are overdoing it, but that's the whole point. These are not actors, these are actual players taken in actual in-game situations. And that's why I decided to show you this trailer in the first place. So after this short presentation of the game, let's talk a bit about the account creation phase. You can try out EVE Online for free for 21 days by creating an account on the official website. However, this is not the method I would recommend. Instead, you could create your account using the link in the description down below or that is displayed on screen right now. What this changes is that if later down the line you decide to pay for your first month of monthly subscription to EVE 9, I then receive a reward that I can sell on the in-game market and share half of its value with you. We are talking about a substantial amount of money, even more so for a new player. And it's probably more than you could make during your entire trial period. It will leave you a lot of breathing room to experiment and maybe make a few mistakes along the way without feeling broke. Now, of course, you are free to use other links, but if you do, make sure you do not get scammed, because in this game, scamming is allowed, I will refer you to the first part of this video, and this very reward money is no exception. And so if you are wondering right now why I wouldn't try to scam you in the first place, well, it's simply because this is a stable income stream for me, and I have no interest in trying to make a quick cash out on the short term at the expense of long term benefits. You can find everything I just said here and even more details about this trial link reward program on my website called eve-guides.fr slash English. You are also invited to bookmark this page if you decide to use my invite link because it contains the explanation on how to redeem your reward money once you have decided to pay for your first month of monthly subscription to the game. Because unfortunately, this reward program is not automated at all. It is at the image of some gameplay styles in EVE that have been created by players for players in an emergent way without any input from CCP. So yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but at least it's what makes this game interesting in the first place. So to go back on the game itself, once you have created your account, you are prompted to download the launcher and at this point, you are almost ready to go. The launcher utilizes a technology called the Download on Demand, which is a technology close to what Blizzard utilizes for their games. What this means is that if you want to try out EVE, you can do so in only a few minutes because the initial download for the game will be very very short. Now of course, it also requires a good connection because then the game will have to download the assets as you play when you need them. If after trying out the game you decide that you like it, I strongly recommend that you go into the launcher's settings and tick download everything so that you download everything at once and are done with it. We are now reaching the end of the first episode. We haven't started the game yet, but we will of course at the beginning of episode 2. 
For now, you have at least learned what makes Eve interesting in my opinion, with its four defining aspects, which are the sandbox side, the unique server and community side, the accent it puts on teamwork gameplay, and of course, the stakes that are inherently contained in most PvP and some PvE situations, which makes them more interesting and overall more entertaining of course. Now, if you aren't fed up with my accent yet, I invite you to go watch the second episode of this video series. But before you go, know that we have a Discord server, which can be of use if you want to hang out with other beginners just like you, or if you want to ask a few questions about the game to more veteran players who might be available to answer them on the spot just for you. The invitation giving you access to the Discord server is very easy to get. Just go back to the article which explains how to redeem your money from my trial link reward program. And at the bottom of said article, you will find a huge button that you just have to press to get invited into the Discord server. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Discord, the best way I could describe it is that it is a mix between Skype, TeamSpeak and Slack in that it enables you to speak, write and share content with your friends while featuring a multi-server integration which is very well made, a very clever split between vocal chat and text chat so that you can text chat on multiple servers at once while speaking in another server, and of course user mentions so that you know when you are needed, where you are needed if someone mentions your name. Thank you for watching this episode. If you have any feedback, don't hesitate to use the comment section down below. And of course, if you enjoyed the content, don't hesitate to share said content with your friends or anyone you know might be interested because it is the best way to thank content creators that you enjoy. And as we say around here, fly safe.